It's not a very pleasant subject, but it's such a common problem that I thought we should discuss it. Diarrhea. Technically, diarrhea, also known as dysentery, is excessive bowel movement frequency with increased fecal fluidity. The intestinal tract is pretty amazing. You start at one end with food material that gets ground up, mixed with a concoction of liquids and chemicals, some of which are extremely caustic. This brew allows the components of the food to be absorbed and the leftovers are expelled. Diarrhea can have many causes, from internal parasites, bacteria, and viruses, to one of the most frequent etiologies, especially in dogs, dietary indiscretion. Dogs love to eat first and think later. Other causes can be primary disorders of the bowel, such as inflammation of the intestines, reaction to drugs or toxins, metabolic disorders such as hypoadrenocorticism, Addison's disease, kidney malfunction, liver disorders, even cancer. Diarrhea can be acute, of recent onset, or it can be chronic, ongoing for extended periods of time. Diarrhea is also broadly categorized as either small or large bowel in origin. With small bowel diarrhea, loss of weight and condition is seen. This is due to the body's inability to properly absorb nutrients from the ingested foods. My clients often ask me what they can do at home for diarrhea. I will always counsel a pet owner that it's okay to attempt symptomatic care for a few days as long as their pet is not vomiting and appears to be in good spirits. If the pet is lethargic, losing weight and condition, if the owner notices blood in the stool or vomit, or if the signs seem to be worsening, bring the pet in immediately. For mild acute diarrhea without vomiting, a bland diet will often suffice. For a dog, try boiled rice mixed 50-50 with boiled ground meat. You'll want to boil the meat in order to remove any excess fat. Some dogs prefer cottage cheese mixed with instant mashed potatoes that are reconstituted only with warm water, not butter or milk. Again, combine these ingredients 50-50. Cats don't seem to be fans of boiled rice or potatoes. I found that all meat human baby food, which you add instant baby rice cereal, pablum, and some warm water is more appealing to the feline taste buds. Small multiple meals are suggested. Feed the bland diet until the stool is normalized. This may take a few days. Then gradually add in the regular diet with each meal until you're feeding only the usual fare. Diarrhea can quickly lead to dehydration. If you lift your pet skin located between the shoulder blades and it does not quickly return to its starting position, but rather retains that pinched appearance, your pet is dehydrated. It needs to be seen by your veterinarian now. It's tempting to try over-the-counter human antidiarrhea medications, but I don't recommend you do this without contacting your veterinarian first. If your pet's condition dictates a trip to your veterinarian, be sure to ask all members of the family if they've been feeding something different. Also check to see if they're aware of any clothing, toys, or other items that may have been chewed up. Even if your pet has never chewed and swallowed foreign material in the past, there's always a first time. You would be amazed at what a dog would eat. And oh yes, be sure to bring in a fresh stool sample. Have more questions about the heartbreak of diarrhea? Just ask your veterinarian.